Canine Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 152 of the Protection Dog Podcast, where we offer an alternative to conventional training methods and philosophy. I am your host, Joel Riles, and today is June the 15th, 2023. Wow, not only are we in the sixth month of the year, but we're already halfway through that month. Hey, little one. And for those of you on the audio or the video streams, we have one of our little puppies right here. It's one of our little females from the MDK Striker Litter. Isn't she adorable? And uh, so we do still have some availability on this litter if you guys are interested. And I am super excited. Striker and MDK are both two of our uh, most awesome dogs on ground. And uh, so today we are going to be talking about using dog training philosophy and techniques to build connections and network, building your tribe. We'll talk a little bit about what that is, what that means, why it might be important, and some of the techniques uh, that we learned through dog training that you can use to do this and uh, a lot of the pitfalls that I see uh, people doing while they are trying to get things going. I know, right? Yeah, you like my beard? She's like, it's like my mom. It's fuzzy. All right. So welcome to everybody. I see uh, some people coming into the uh, Instagram chat. I appreciate you guys all being here. Uh, also to everyone watching this afterwards, thank you for coming on. Tonight I have my Jim Beam Black and a uh, cool little cup my wife got me. It says whiskey on it, so I know what's in there. And uh, so I appreciate that. I'll be sipping on that throughout tonight's broadcast. And uh, before we jump into tonight's topic, let's cover tonight's sponsor. Tonight's sponsor is Fortress Canine. So what Fortress Canine does is we train dogs that are safe around your family, that are safe around your pets, that are safe around your children. Uh, also, we train dogs that when the time comes to defend you, they don't just bite and hold on to one place. They actually fight a human being for you. And, uh, and then they live your life with you. Uh, my kind of philosophy on this is that 99% of your life, 99.9% .9 of your life is going to be you just living your life with your dog. And if your dog is a pain in the butt, if your dog is not disciplined, if your dog is causing problems, then your life with your protection dog is not an enjoyable one. And we want your life to be an enjoyable one and for you to have the peace of mind of having that protection dog there should you ever need it. Uh, so if you are interested or want more information, you can visit our website. It is FortressK9.com, F-O-R-T-R-E-S-S, -S, the letter K, the number nine.com. You can email me at Joel, J-O-E-L, at FortressK9.com. You can send me a text, and I would be happy to converse with you on text, and we can set up a consult if we need to. And that number is 813-836-9244. Remember, do not call me. I have too much stuff going on during the day uh, to answer phone calls that I don't know. And uh, so that just doesn't happen. But if you leave me a voicemail, I'll probably check it in the next six weeks. So again, text is your best way of reaching me. Or you can DM me on Instagram. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. Well, we're not really on Twitch. We're on Twitter. We're on Truth Social. We're on Gab. We're on LinkedIn. Um, all kinds of all the social media platforms that are the, the major ones. And we're also on Noster. So if you are on Noster then you can find us there. My pub key is in the show notes of this, as well as almost any post that we do on any of the platforms that allow me to have that many characters in them. And if you're not on Noster, what's wrong with you? Get over and check out Noster. Uh, so we'll deal with that just a little bit more in just a second. All right. So notes and updates for this week. The training story. Again, this was something that came up. Uh, for those of you who don't know Chips, a lot of times he's on the Instagram um, side of the live stream here. Uh, Chip comes up here almost every Thursday. We track uh, till about 1 p.m. and uh, we run multiple tracks on my Fortress Canine um, Instagram channel. I put them up on the stories. I, we screenshot our uh, GPS tracks and the overlaps and you can uh, see those all there. But we often have little conversations in between tracks and when we finish up and things like that. One of the things that struck me today uh, talking with Chip was how interested he is in being around when people even younger than him in the dog training world are there because they ask questions that he already takes for granted, right? And that's one of the things that I kind of struggle with. I've been doing this for over 20 years now, 
And so sometimes I forget what I didn't even have the concept of when I was first learning. And I just assume that the person I'm talking to kind of has a little bit of that uh, background. And I'm like, um, I'm talking over their heads, right? It's real easy to do when you start getting into marketing and stuff like that. They will often tell you, you have to dumb your marketing down. And so if you have an a information level at like a level 10 and whatever the thing is that you're wanting to uh, share with people and help people out with, we think if we go to a seven, then we're dumbing it down for them. But we really have to go down to like a level three, right? And that's not being demeaning to anyone. It's just meaning, hey, you started way down there too. You have to talk at that level and build them up. Um, some of the podcasts I'm going to mention earlier or a little here in just a second um, when I try to talk to people about the topics that I'm learning in those podcasts, I often have to do the same thing. When you start getting into things like money and artificial intelligence and Bitcoin and bunches of other stuff, like the stuff that Jordan Peterson talks about, I assume in my brain, not necessarily consciously, but more subconsciously, that the people who are uh, who I'm talking to have also heard all these things and we're just conversing about it. And then I realized, oh, crap, wait a minute. I have to go back and kind of build some kind of a foundation here so that you have an idea of what it is I'm actually talking about. So I have your digging deeper by getting simpler and remembering where you started, because a lot of times when we go back to those simple things, I'm like, oh, yeah, here's all those really cool foundational truths that were so shocking and, and life changing for me when I found them out. And now I just take them for granted. So I would encourage you in whatever field you're in. Um, dig deeper by getting simpler and talking to people who are new, uh, watch for those light bulb moments and then use that to kind of help build uh, excitement about the thing that you're talking about. All right. What is new on the dog stead? Well, of course we have puppies. Oh, puppy, puppy. Yeah. What you doing there, little girl? I'm going to hand her off to my wife. Yeah, she's Such tired. a little sweetheart. And, um, so we have MDK striker litter on ground. They are doing awesome. Uh, they were all getting out. So I, I put in our whelping box, we have these little things you can slide into the doors that make it a little harder for the pups to get out. And so I had a couple puppies who were getting out, but couldn't figure out how to get back in. So I added one of those in so that they wouldn't get stuck outside their whelping box. And then yesterday they were doing so good and they really wanted to get out and run around and explore. So I took, took it out so they could get out and they were running around and they were doing great and they were able to get out and get back in. And so I was like, all right. And then I went to bed last night and woke up about one 30 in the morning and heard it raining. And I was like, Hmm, I should probably go check on those puppies. And uh, there were four puppies inside nice and safe. And there were six puppies outside running around going, where did we go? We don't know what's going on. And uh, so I had to grab all those puppies and put them in the door and then go back around and put them back in their whelping box uh, with their mama. And uh, so they are growing. They're getting faster and uh, stronger every day. They're doing awesome. I'm so excited to see these little guys develop. Also, our chicken coop has been upgraded. So we found this thing that we thought would be really cool for our pups, too. Um, it's like 19 feet long, eight feet wide. Uh, it's about six and a half feet in the center. So you can walk around in it very comfortably. And it had what looked like chain link fence that went all the way over and kind of connected. And when we got them, instead of chain link fence, it's like a thin chicken wire, uh, which is great if I'm trying to protect my chickens inside of it from aerial predators. And I have a fencing that I can put on the outside of it to kind of uh, strengthen the side. So something like a raccoon doesn't get over there and rip a hole in it. But it's definitely not going to work for the dogs. Uh, but I got two of them, so I put them together, and uh, and those are now uh, out for the chickens. We did have a little chicken excitement uh, the second day. I wasn't didn't quite have it all enclosed yet, and uh, but we needed to let the chickens out, so the chickens got out in the morning uh, of their coop, and we came out there, and they had gone through the fence and were in the woods, and so I gave my children the big challenge of going through the woods, getting to the spot where we could see the chickens and then kind of herding them back through the hole, which was much more difficult than they thought it was going to be. But they did a great job. They got all of our chickens back and now they're all back inside their little run area and they're doing great. And then we also today uh, or maybe yesterday, we ordered uh, concrete blocks so that on the uh, raised beds, the raised, quote unquote, raised beds on the front of the building will now actually be raised beds. And my wife will stop yelling at me and telling me those are not raised beds. 
And, uh, and so there will actually be raised beds and then we'll take the railroad ties that we are using to hold everything in place there and move those to the back and be able to take our uh, railroad tie raised beds behind the kennel and lift them up another about eight or 10 inches, however tall a railroad tie is. And uh, so that'll be a little bit better as well. So all of that stuff's going on. Uh, if you are on um, YouTube, Noster, and a couple of the other platforms. I don't do this everywhere, but I will frequently post, I call them dog stead updates. And uh, so you can see some of those videos and things like that. They're pretty cool. And uh, yeah, Valley, uh, Valley the Mally said, they're not real raised beds, lots of laughs. Yeah, I know. I get yelled at for that all the time, but they will be soon. And then she'll be happy and she won't fuss at me anymore. So I guess that will make me happy too. And I believe that's Tracy. Tracy keeps changing her uh, Instagram handle name. So I always have to keep up with that. All right, real quick. Don't forget, I'll be speaking at Prepper Camp September 22nd and 20 through the 24th. That is in a little town called Saluda, North Carolina. It's really great uh, kind of a camping area. It's a fairly large space. And uh, they have lots and lots of areas where there's lots of instructions going on and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you speak the same tent at the same time all three days so that you can pick and choose who you want to go to but if you want to meet our dogs if you are anywhere in the north carolina south carolina region there um, it would not be a very long drive for you and you could come meet us meet the dogs and meet lots of other great people and start doing something that we're going to talk about today building that tribe if you would like more information or to purchase tickets you can go to prepper camp p-r-e-p-p-e-r -E -E camp dot com and uh, you can find out more information and purchase your tickets there and then on october 14th through the 15th we'll be in camden tennessee again uh speaking at the self-reliance festival so my talk there is actually going to be on building a business and we're going to get into some of the stuff uh that goes into that uh, it's actually about building a niche business a niche business and uh, so we're going to talk about some of the challenges some of the marketing some things like that have a question and answer but of course, if I'm going to an event, there's dogs and there's going to be dog demos. And John Willis, who uh, owns the facility that we do that event at, lets us offer people to get in the bite suit and take bites off our dogs. So if you want to do that, you can, or you can just come and watch other people get in the bite suit and get chewed on. So if you'd like to come meet us there in the Camden, Tennessee area, you can find out more information and get your tickets at selfreliancefestival.com. And uh, the other podcasts that I like, all right, I mentioned this a few minutes ago, uh, two that I, well, one that I started listening to recently and one I've been listening to a little while, uh, one is called AI Unchained. And of course, AI stands for artificial intelligence. And so there's a guy, Guy Swan, he's got a, a podcast called Bitcoin Audible, and he calls himself the guy who's read more about Bitcoin than anyone else you know. And he finds papers, he finds books, things like that, that are uh, influential in the Bitcoin space and he reads them and then he does a little thing called a guy's take and he kind of gives his opinion and thoughts on them and he has recently started a podcast AI Unchained that is uh, diving into the world of artificial intelligence. What are the tools that we can use? What are the developments going on? What's the difference between closed source and open source AIs? And lots of really cool, interesting things there. There's only four episodes up, but they are amazing. And uh, I just get more and more excited about AI. In fact, I use AI partially anyway to do the outline for my last several podcasts. And I'll continue using it into the future. It will take something that would normally be an hour's worth of work and condenses it down into about 15 minutes worth of work. So... Uh, I would definitely encourage you to check out AI Unchained by Guy Swan. And then the other one is Wealth Setting Podcast by John Pugliano. So John is a um, investment manager. And, uh, and un unlike most people who tell you what to do with your money, but they don't really have any money themselves and have no idea what they're doing. John actually became a millionaire first using the principles that he continues to use. And then he started managing money for other people and he has a podcast that has great information he only does one episode about every week or two and they're usually really short somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes uh, but he will give you thoughts on the current markets he will give you thoughts on ideas and concepts he will answer questions sometimes um, he is also one of the expert council members for jack show the survival podcast and he gets a lot of questions there on taxes and IRAs and all sorts of things like that, where, where to invest certain things. I uh, highly recommend you check him out if you are trying to build uh, any kind of wealth, and I hope that you are. 
Okay, don't forget, we are on Noster. If you want to get on Noster and you are not currently on Noster, you're one of those people that are like, I'm not there and I want to be. How do I do it? Uh, check out snort.social or iris. I think it's T O, but if you just typed in iris Noster with a space in between them, Noster is N O S T R, stands for notes and other stuff transmitted over relays. Um, you will find both of those. Uh, you can also on iOS, you can find Damus or Damus. I've heard him pronounce it both ways. It's D-A-M-U-S on iOS and on Android. You can find it on Amethyst. Any of those places you tell them you want to sign up, they will create a public and a private key. Your public key is like your username. Although you can change the username that's displayed to just about anything you want. Like I am at Fortress K9, just like I am everywhere else. Um, but your private key is like your password. So make sure you write it down. I put mine in a note, which maybe isn't the most secure place for it, but that way I can easily copy and paste it if I need to. And um, you can also find out a lot more about Noster by going to Noster, N-O-S-T-R dot how, H-O-W. And, uh, and there'll be lots of question and answers uh, there that uh, you can research and figure out how to do it. It's way simpler than it sounds. It takes you less time to do it. And then it just took me to explain it. And uh, and then it's kind of, there's lots and lots of things being built on Noster. But most of those platforms I just told you about are kind of like a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram mix. Uh, you know, they're kind of like mixed in there. So it's a social media type of thing right now. But there are lots and lots of things being built on Noster. We got some flies in here that are bothering me. And uh, so I highly recommend you check it out. Start getting uh, into the platform uh, it's not actually a platform. It is a protocol like email or HTTP. And uh, the one really cool thing about Nostra is any of those platforms I just mentioned, you could be on one, you could make a post and I can follow you from a totally different client. They call those, they're, they're actually not platforms or apps, they're clients. And I could be on the other one. Like I use Domus on my iPhone and I can make posts. You can see it. I can see your posts. If you make them on say snort.social, we can interact. We can actually even send money back and forth via a thing they call Zaps, which uses uh, Bitcoin Lightning and send small amounts of Bitcoin. And when you get a certain amount, you move it over to a wallet and you can turn it into cash if you don't like Bitcoin. And so there's some really cool stuff being built there. Highly recommend you check it out. That is Noster. And uh, you can find out a lot more information about Noster at Noster.how. Don't forget, if you want to interact and you want to make sure that I see your comment and reply to your comment, if we have a lot of activity, which sometimes we do, sometimes we don't make sure you put it in all caps. If you're on a mobile device, you just double tap your caps key and it will put you in caps lock. And then when you type out your comment or question, double check it real quick before you hit send because your uh, autocorrect typically doesn't work uh, in all caps. And then send that and I will check it out and reply to you at the end of the podcast. Don't forget to smash that like, click subscribe. If you're on YouTube, click the little bell so you get notifications. And uh, it will let more people see. It will make sure that you get updates and uh, tell your friends and family about us if you uh, like what we do here. I really appreciate that. All right. So we are jumping into tonight's topic, which is building your tribe using dog training philosophy and techniques to build connections and networks. So first of all, uh, if you've heard this word tribe, you, you may have various different ideas about what that means. And there are people that are kind of crazy that use it. And there are people that, um, you know, they'll say things like, oh, we're getting into tribalism with all the political craziness going on in our country. So first, let me explain what do I mean by tribe? I'm basically just referring to your network. Now, we're going to get into that in more in depth. But just keep in mind in a network, you probably have some kind of network in whatever business you're in right now. Right. The, the guy that uh, I lease my facility from here, uh, he runs a paint shop and primarily they paint products for the airline industry. They paint products for the military, the, the, you know, all these uh, high tech types of paints and coatings that you have to put on things. And so he runs, you know, thousands and thousands of these uh, little items and they do these high tech paint coatings on that kind of stuff. Right. And his name is Bob and Bob knows almost everybody in the area. But there are certain people that Bob is very close to. And there are other people that if I just say, hey, Bob, do you know somebody who does this? He'll be like, oh, yeah, this guy does this. Right. He may not be close friends with that guy. He may not have talked to that guy in five years, but he knows who he is. Bob is a network connection machine. He is just one of those guys that can talk to anybody, 
people love talking to Bob and everybody likes Bob. And Bob has a really good memory about this guy does that and that guy does this. And he's really good at putting people together. Right. And so Bob has a very extensive tribe, but not all of those people are in that, you know, let's, you could call it an inner circle, close friends, you know, that sort of thing. Right. There are certain people who are really close to Bob and there are certain people who Bob knows, but you know, they don't know much about what he does. And uh, maybe they would ask, but maybe they wouldn't. And he doesn't really care because maybe it's the guy that he buys meat from. And he doesn't care if that guy knows all of his, you know, personal details. Um, he may not want him to know his personal details, right? He's just like, I'm a good customer. I come and I buy from you. As long as you make a good product, I'll be a loyal customer and you'll like me because I'm here consistently buying your product, right? And so all of those things can be different levels within your network and your connections. And so that's what we're going to be going over is tribe is a much broader category, at least in terms of how we're going to discuss it today. than what some people, especially people, you know, the prepper camp and the self-reliance festival, there's a lot of people in the quote unquote prepper community that are there. Right. And the interesting thing to me is the folks over at prepper camp, that's a much broader base of people that are there. And you have everything from people who are, who like saw something in the news, and now they're panicking and, and they, they come and they're just like, help me. I don't know what to do. Do I need gas masks or what? And it's like, no, you don't need gas masks. Calm down. And then you have the group over at Self-Reliance Festival who are much more about building a resilient lifestyle. You just heard me talk about I'm going to be speaking on building a niche business there because one of the best things you can do to build a resilient lifestyle, one of the best things you can do to be uncancelable in today's society is to develop a network of people who follow you, who know exactly who you are. And when this starts to happen, lots of people are going to not like you too, right? That's okay. And then I could say something and maybe the crazies in whatever category, right or left, hear it and go, holy crap, did you hear what he said? Blah, blah, blah. And all the people who follow me go, yeah, that sounds like Joel, right? You already know what I think because I'm always who I am, whether you're here in person or whether we're doing a live stream like we're doing tonight. And so I'm uncancelable. Like I could say, as long as I'm being true to what I believe in and everything else is I run my own business. Nobody can fire me, right? I can do stupid things. I can make my business not make money. But if you figure out how to run a business, you can be yourself and nobody can fire you, right? So, uh, but that whole group of people is much more on the resilient lifestyle so that if there's food shortages, if there's inflation, if there's problems, bank collapses, and all these other things that people get all riled up about, right? They can make it and they can make it better than most other people can make it because they've already built tribe and they built a resilient lifestyle that allows them to continue to thrive no matter what's going on around them because I am not a crazy prepper person. I am not a go buy gas masks. And like, if you have bought all the other things that you need, which there's lots of things more important than gas masks, but the most important thing you can do, just so you kind of have my generalized stance on this, right? Because people are like, hmm, you're a prepper. Don't, not quite sure about that. All right, here's what you need first. You ready? Three months of savings in your bank account. That's the very first thing you need. Don't do anything else until you have three months supply of three months of reserve cash in your bank account because the most likely disaster you're going to face is getting laid off. And especially in our current climate where interest rates are going up, businesses and banks are all under a lot of stress because they all have a lot of debt. And as interest rate goes up, that puts stress on those companies to not only pay off the debt they already have, but to get new debt, right? And then on top of that, what are they gonna do? Well, we need a downsize. Well, what if you're one of the guys in the downsizing? And then all of a sudden, holy shit, I don't have a job. Well, if you have three months of income already in your bank account, you can pay all your bills, you can feed yourselves, you can get gas. You have three months to find another job or to start a business or to do whatever it is you want. That's a good cushion, right? Now, if you then after that, you can continue to build it up, get six months. That would be even better, right? And then you figure, hey, well, if I have three months worth of savings, maybe it'd be a good idea to have a couple weeks or a month's worth of food on hand and not crazy food, not MREs or any of this other kind of stuff. Like if you like them, I guess you could buy some MREs. Uh, have you ever eaten them for very long though? Like I lived off MREs in Afghanistan. It's not the best thing in the world. Although for a field exercise, they're pretty good. 
especially if you get the ranger handbook and learn how to do all the cool little things with them. But what do you eat? Store what you eat and eat what you store, right? And uh, and so check out Jack Spierko's The Survival Podcast and look up copy canning. So basically what this means is, hey, whatever you buy, just buy one or two extras. Start buying a couple extras. If you go through one box of macaroni and cheese a week or five boxes a week, well, start buying two or three extras when you go, right? And start putting them on a shelf. And then once you get, so if you go through, let's say three a week, right? I go through three boxes of macaroni a week. Well, how many do I have to have to have a month's worth of that? Well, three times four is 12. So once I have 12 extra boxes of macaroni and cheese, I've got a month's worth of extra macaroni and cheese for my kids so that they can be happy when they're eating their mac and cheese, right? And whatever kinds of things you normally get and do, you start building that stuff slowly first. So think about it this way. Now I've got three months of money in the bank that I can pay my bills. I've got a month of food, which means I don't have to buy food for that month. So now I can stretch that money a little farther than three months. Now, when I walk into an employer and I'm like, hey, I need a job, I can be calm and comfortable, not panicky, right? Because even if I can play it off well, if I'm panicky, they pick that up. And if I've got two people I'm looking at hiring and one is confident and the other is panicky, guess who I'm hiring? The panicky guy, even if he's more qualified, mm, I get a weird vibe about that guy. I think I'm going to hire the confident guy, even if he's a little less qualified, right? So start dealing with your actual real potential situations, and then you slowly build from there. So I'm not going to go deeper than that because this isn't a whole episode on that kind of stuff, but just wanted to give you guys an idea. That's my concept, right? It's much more real world, practical, build a resilient lifestyle, do the things that you love and build your life so that if things do happen and things are going to happen, whether it's you lost a job, whether a family member gets sick or whether the economy gets really bad, stuff happens in life. Build a life that when stuff happens, you can coast through it rather than having everything collapse around you. All right. So, okay, jump back on topic. That was a big tangent we took there. So this is why building a tribe is a part of building a resilient lifestyle. That's why we're talking about it tonight. All right. And so why are we connecting dog training and building tribe? Well, one of the things that I have noticed when I start working with clients in dog training is most people are very unaware or take for granted the connection that we have with our dogs and how that applies to our interactions with other people, our interactions with our family, and even how we think about ourselves, right? And as we become much more aware of ourselves, much more aware of what's going on with our dogs, all of a sudden, now we're able to start becoming more aware of how we interact with other people. And this has a huge impact on how we build tribe. I think I put this in a little bit later, but we'll touch on it now. These events I just described to you, right? Prepper camp and SRF and stuff like that. I've gone to these events, and there will be a new person that's there, right? And you kind of have the group of people that kind of come every time. And it's like, hey, good to see you again. And then you have the new people. And some of the new people are cool. And some of the new people are crazy. And some of the crazy people, and they might be normal, but they might be in panic mode like we talked about, right? And they're like, oh, my goodness, what the heck am I going to do? I need to build tribe. And so I need to find all these people that are going to be my tribe. And we're all going to like band together when the zombies come and blah, blah. And I'm like, whoa, 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 calm down. But still, they run around this event. that's like a two or three day event. And they try and make all their connections in this short little period of time. And I'm like, I have no clue who you are. I don't know you. I don't trust you. I don't want anything to do with you if you're in panic mode, right? And so if you approach these things the wrong way, you can burn a bunch of bridges that you don't need to burn, right? Because even if this person calms down the next time I see them, I already have a preconceived notion that you're a little bit on the crazy side. I don't know if I want to be a part of whatever you have going on over there. And so now they have something they have to overcome rather than just coming in and saying, hey, nice to meet you. Like, this is a thing we do. This is a property I have. This is a business I run. Like, it'd be really cool if you checked it out. Oh yeah, that would be cool. And then maybe we can start doing things together as businesses, or maybe we go, um, you know, stop by their place on one of our trips or something like that. And you slowly build these relationships. So, all right. So the foundation of any connection that you have is trust and respect. 
Now, don't forget, we talked about, we're not all talking about our closest inner circle, closest friends thing here, right? Trust and respect applies all the way across your whole network. If you know somebody in your network and they don't trust you, or they don't respect you, or they know that you don't respect them, they're not going to be somebody who has any kind of loyalty loyalty to you at all. Now, loyalty has a lot of different levels, right? With my butcher, I just want them to know I am a loyal customer. I always buy meat from you every time you have a cow uh, or every time you do a butchering. And I'm always here. So I want to be at the front of the line when that kind of stuff comes up, right? Even if I don't need me, I will buy another freezer to buy a half a cow or a quarter of a cow from you just so that I stay at the front of that line with that person. Now they are not close friends. They are not people that we hang out with all the time. I'm, I just want to show them that I respect them and that they can trust me to show up whenever they're doing one of their butcherings, right? So that I stay at the top of the line. So even at that level, trust and respect has a huge impact on how this works. And of course, in the dog training world, a lot of people try to be friends with their dogs. And I tell my clients all the time, you don't need to be friends with your dogs. First of all, if your dog doesn't respect you, you're not going to be able to be friends with your dogs. Have you ever had somebody who really wanted to be your friend and they just kind of followed you around like a lost puppy and, and they were always like, hey, what do you want to do? Like, whatever you like is what I like and, and whatever I think you like is what I'm going to say I like. And, and they like won't leave you alone for five minutes and you're like, just get away from me. Like, leave me alone for 10 minutes, right? No matter how much that person wants to be your friend, you're not interested in being friends with them because they're just annoying you. But if the person's like, hey, good to meet you. This is who I am, blah, blah. I'm going to go over here and do this other thing now. And you're like, hey, I kind of connect with that person. Then maybe when I see an opportunity, I'm going to reach over and connect with them, right? And we start respecting one another. And then from that mutual respect, we can build a friendship. And so trust and respect is the foundation of any of this other kind of stuff happening. And the same thing applies in the dog world. The same thing applies in our connections with our people, our tribe, our networks, right? So remember, building a tribe doesn't mean that you're close friends with everyone or that you would trust them to have your back, right? And so we've already mentioned this a little bit, but it's important to understand a lot of people think tribe means, oh, these are the guys or the gals or the families that are going to move to my place when the zombies come. First of all, the zombies aren't coming, right? And then we're going to fight off the biker gangs when they show up and we're going to have all our kit and our guns and our ammo and our gas masks and our night vision and blah, 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 all the stuff that they think in their minds because they read their prepper porn uh, novels and they watch the, you know, the, what is it? The zombie thing that we've been watching. Uh, <laughs> Can't think of it now. There's this whole, what's the name of the show? Dang it. Stop. Now I can't think of I it. Can't even um, they're getting ready to launch the last half of the last season, I think, here soon. Anyway, you know, the zombies, right? When the zombies all come. And uh, these are the people that are, you know, we're going to band together. We're going to do all this stuff. No, no, no. That's not how any of this works, right? It's just about building network. It's just about having a connection with people so that as you're going through and doing things in your normal life, when you need meat, you know who to call. When you want some vegetables, you know who to call. Like, I don't think we're going to end up in a situation food shortage wise where there's nothing available in the stores, right? We're America. That's not Walking Dead. There it is. Thank you, Tracy. They're it's Walking another, Dead. They're huh? launching another episode? Well, they've got the last half of like the last season, I think is what it is. Are you holding out on me? And uh, well, it's not out yet. Hey, you're interrupting my live stream. <laughs> this is how we interact all the time, by the way. So anyway, okay, so it's about where do I go when I want this specific thing? And if you have local people that you already interact with, you'll be able to get it from them when it's not available anywhere else, right? If you have somebody who is your mechanic and you are always there, like I have a place that I go to get my truck worked on. They are pretty overbooked. But when I call them and I say, I know it's short notice. I really apologize, but I really need this thing done. You know what they do? They work me in and they've done it numerous times. And you know what I do when they work me in 
is when I pick my truck up, which I'm usually picking it up like after hours. And I'm like, Hey, I pay online with my debit card. And, uh, and then they put the key in my truck for me and I go over and I pick it up and I throw a, you know, three, $400 in an envelope and I slide it under the door for them with a little thank you letter. I really appreciate you guys taking care of me. Thanks so much. They can do whatever they want with that. They can spread it out among the guys that helped. They can keep it. But because I take care of them, when I need something, they take care of me. And then I don't abuse it. I don't like if I have a month or two months before I need my you know truck fixed, I go, hey, this isn't a rush. Like, but I just need this to be done. Right. And every couple months, my truck goes in and I get some work done on it. And it's fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks every couple months because I have a big truck. It's an excursion, right? But I know because I have a big truck and because it needs regular maintenance, I need somebody that will take care of me when I need them to. So I built that relationship. They don't come hang out with me. We're not close friends, but they're the people I go to to get my truck fixed. And they know, hey, this dude is always bringing his truck to us to get fixed. When he comes in, we need to take care of him because this is a consistent flow of income for us, right? So this is the stuff that we're talking about. It's about having a network that offers mutual benefit to both parties, right? I take care of them. They take care of me, okay? So you can be, a lot of people look at this and they say, well, that's selfish. No, selfish is when I get a benefit and I screw you, or I get a benefit and then I don't share that benefit back to you at all, right? That's selfish. A mutual benefit is called a relationship. There is no such thing as a relationship that only benefits one party, right? If you have that, that's called being taken advantage of not having a relationship. A relationship always benefits both parties. And so sometimes one person gets more of a benefit than the other person, but all of that is perception anyway, right? Like you might be getting more of a physical benefit, but the other person just really likes you and likes hanging out. And so they still feel like they're getting a benefit. It's subjective to them. And you look and you go, but... Like maybe it's a mentor, a business mentor, and they're ultra wealthy and they've got this super successful business and they've built all this stuff up and you ask them for advice and they stop and they take time and they help you out and they help you build your business up. And you're like, I'm not giving them nearly as much as they're giving me. The benefit to them is whatever they perceive it to be. They can say, I just really enjoy helping other people be successful. I really enjoy the time that I get to spend um, you know, hanging out with this person, right? And, and building this mentor mentee type relationship. There's a lot of people who really enjoy that. They've built all this stuff up and they want to share it with people. They want to help other people. And by having a mutual benefit to both parties, both people want to continue the relationship. All right. And that's really important as you think about trust and respect. It's also thinking about having a mutual benefit to both parties. The other part of this is communication. The key to success in any relationship is having good, open, and clear communication. Okay, so here's a little story. I'm not super proud of this. It happened today, all right? I was tracking. And when we're tracking, we're on like some public land. We're on like some power line easement property. Like everywhere where we're at, it's not illegal to be there. But like if the people that like control that property showed up they might be like hey you shouldn't be here and then we'd have to be like hey do you mind if we're here this is what we're doing kind of a thing it's like mostly swamps and all that kind of stuff it's not like places that people are going to build on or or have houses or or developments built in but still kind of technically like not all the area that we move into is area that you're supposed to be just tromping around in with your dogs right so i was out of this area and there's this one spot where there's a power line easement right adjoining this piece of property. <clears throat> but the guy that I tracked went down the side of an interstate. We're not supposed to be there either, right? There's a break in the fence. So he went through the break in the fence, which we didn't create it. It was already there. Um, and then he was on a road and my dog caught wind and started air scenting down this. It's a road, but it's really a driveway. And the person that has that piece of property back there is leaving their property sees us i'm all dressed in camouflage because i wear like long sleeve camouflage tops so when i have all the briars and thorns and everything and uh, i've got this dog and i've got this backpack on i've got a machete on my side because we're in the vines and everything else i look like a crazy person if you don't know what i'm doing out there right and she's like uh can i help you and i'm basically like leave me the hell alone i'm busy 
I'm not going onto your property. I'm trying to do something here. So of course she gets like Spidey sense vibes and she like goes to the end of her driveway and just parks and sitting there. And I'm like, you're freaking distracting me. Like, let, just let me finish. Right. And then I find the guy, I finish, she finally leaves and I find the guy and he's like, yeah, yeah. I heard the whole thing. Cause he was like real close. And he's like, you know what? I would have done the same thing if I saw guys that look like us, like near my property. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. Right. My communication with that woman was not good. We actually talked about it. I'm going to write her an apology letter and let her know, hey, I, I'm really sorry. This is what we're doing. This is where we're at. If you see us out there, these are the days we typically are tracking out there. And, uh, you know, I'd really appreciate it if, you know, you wouldn't have any issues with us being in this general area, right? So my communication sucked on that one today. Communication is extremely important. You can communicate poorly and destroy a potential relationship, or you can communicate well and build great relationships. And again, remember, this is not always about having the closest connections and you know, deep friendships. And all. It's just about being friendly and being willing to give each other a little bit of leeway and help each other out or move us to the front of the line when like maybe they have a product and they're selling their product, but they can sell their product to lots of people. And maybe I want to be in the front of the line for that product, right? So clear communication is extremely important. We go over this with the dogs all the time. 90% of the time you're having a problem with your dog is because your dog has no idea what you want them to do. And your communication sucks and you're not communicating clearly. And as soon as the dog understands what you want, they will typically do it, especially if you've been training with them for just a little while, right? If they have a bond with you, they want to please you. And if you praise them when they please you and let them know, yes, that's what I wanted you to do. They're like, "Woo, that was awesome. I want to do what you want me to do again, because I want you to be happy with me again. And then when we're confusing to them and they're trying to do it, and we're getting frustrated. It breaks them down. Right. And then they're like, well, I keep trying to do what you want. And it's not working. And then I all get all disappointed. Right. And they start losing their motivation. That happens in our relationships with people all the time. But we don't phrase it the same way, right? Those aren't our dogs. People aren't our dogs. So they don't come home with us. They're, they're not always with us. And we might, you know, spend five minutes together. Then we go our opposite directions. And they're like, that guy was an asshole today. I don't ever want to interact with them again. And if I do, I'm going to immediately start with a negative perception, right? That's why I need to write an apology letter because I suck today. So. We often make the mistake of thinking that we have to share everything about our lives with every member of our tribe, but there are lots of different levels of our tribe and our communication should be catered accordingly to each. Okay. So these crazy people I told you about at these events that I meet, they'll come in and like, literally like, hi, this is who I am. And here's everything about my life story and all my you know, stuff going on in my life. And please, please, please be a part of my tribe you're crazy, right? I don't want anything to do with that person. It's already turned into negative. Nope. Get as far away from me as possible. Don't want anything to do with you. Whereas if you come in and you're like, hi, this is me. Who are you? What do you do? Oh, cool. This is what I do. All right. That's interesting. Is there a way that we can work together? Maybe, you know, asking questions about the other person's life, showing a little interest in what they do. And then if you hit it off, you hit it off. And if you don't, you're, you're like, well, they're cool, but I don't know how we would like do anything together or connect or, or things like that. So, Hey, you know, if I see them again, it's all positive and maybe we'll figure out something in the future. There's no like bridges burn, but sometimes you connect and sometimes you don't, right? Don't try to force these things. Now, positive reinforcement comes from when you do connect and you do have like something or sometimes you don't necessarily quote unquote connect where you feel like, man, I really like this person. But here, here's an example. We were at this last event uh, a couple months ago and at SRF, Self-Reliance Festival, and the event's over. It's like a week after the event. And I get a text from John Willis. Now, me and John Willis have kind of hit it off, but we're still not like the closest of friends. I don't just like cut loose go up there and hang out with them for no apparent reason, right? Like we'll kind of text back and forth a little bit. Um, I'm on some of their live streams sometimes and things like that. So I have a little bit more connection than some people, but it's not like we're, you know, we just like have long conversations into the, the night or anything like that, right? Neither one of us have time for that. 
But all of a sudden I get this text from him like a week later and he's like, hey, this dude reached out to me. He wants to do this thing about making dog beds. I sent him over to you. And within a, you know an hour or so of that text, I get a text from the kid who's like, hey, I asked John Willis about this because John Willis builds tactical nylon stuff, right? So this kid's thinking, I want to build these things. I want to make these dog beds. And uh, so maybe John is who I should talk to. And John's like, no, 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 no. You don't need to talk to me. You need to talk to Joel. He's got dogs. And so he reaches out to me. But because John connected us, he reached out and he's, he's like, hey, this is what I want to do, blah, blah. Will you test it for me? And I'm like, well, if you send me a sample of it, I'll test it for you. And then he starts asking me questions like, well, what kind of material should I make it out of? What kind of problems do you have with dog beds? What kind of issues are there that I need to you know, plan into from the beginning? So I'm like, listen, I don't have time to make dog beds. Personally, I have a, a industrial machine. I make dog leads. I make certain pieces of dog equipment, but I can't get into the making dog beds industry right now. Right. So I send this kid a bunch of information. He makes his dog bed. And out of this material that's like semi like puncture proof and he sends it to me. And so far it's been great. I've been putting dogs in this crate with this dog bed in it. So far, nobody's chewed it up. Now I need to find dogs that will try to chew it up so that we can actually give it a full test. But that whole connection came because one person connected to another person connected to another person. And we, and this person said, Hey, can me and you work together? And that person said, no, no, we can't work together. But, you should work with this other guy that can make a connection for you. And then a connection happened because two of us were connected and now a third person became connected and it all seemed very weird and, and disconnected until you see where it all came together. And that happened because of positive reinforcement. Whenever there's a good interaction, we reinforce it. Whenever there's anything that's getting a little out of whack, we kind of let that be known too, right? Another example, it happened at SRF as well is I think this is my very first time there. And I had just gotten this new dog helmet and it had what they call active hearing protection. So these are the hearing earmuffs that guys will wear on the, on the shooting ranges and they have a little speaker on the outside of them. And when, when the volume is normal, it picks up the volume for you and it, and it like transmits it via like a microphone or a little speaker inside your headset so you can talk at like a normal level and still hear each other. Because if you've ever worn headsets, normal headsets on a range, you're like yelling at each other, right? So now I can talk at a normal level, but when somebody fires a round off, it like picks up that noise is way too loud. It cuts it down. And then as soon as it's over, it goes back and, and like we can talk to each other again at normal levels, right? And somebody had one of these that they mounted to a dog helmet. So the dogs are getting this kind of benefit as well. And I tried the helmet out. It was kind of a cool helmet, has a lot of like accessories, but overall the helmet is crap. But I had another helmet that I'd had previous to that that I really, really liked. And it had a lot of really cool uh, features to it, but it did not have active hearing protection. So there was this dude there that did 3D printing and he was kind of into some various different things. So I came in, I'm talking to him and we like kind of disassembled this whole thing and started messing with stuff and blah, blah, blah. And it was kind of fun and cool, but there was this other dude who was just kind of hanging out in the background, wasn't saying anything, was just kind of watching what was going on. And we kind of had this project and I was going to work on some things, but it, in order to make that a reality, I would have had to like literally go through the whole process of finding somebody to manufacture a whole new product that didn't exist in the market at all for this very small group of people who would want to put active hearing protection on their dogs. And then after I got back to my booth, I don't remember if it was that night or the next day, this guy shows up kind of unassuming, real kind of quiet, not a really outspoken guy. And he's like, hey, I was kind of thinking maybe we could just make these platforms, which is what the other helmet company used to attach these active hearing protections to their helmets. What if we just made those for this other helmet? And then all you'd have to do is attach this thing is already made by another company, 3M or whatever. And all of a sudden, now we have this capability on this other helmet system. And because we built those relationships there, we were interacting, we were talking to people. He came up and now we've been developing for the K9 helm, which is the best K9 helmet. Dark system sucks. I'm going to start like posting that every other post. Dark system sucks. I should make it a whole new hashtag. And um, 
But, but Derek at K9 Helm builds an awesome product. It's now carried by Ray Allen. If you're into the dog training world and you want to get a dog helmet. And we are developing a platform to be able to attach active hearing protection devices to the dog helmets. Ed Lamb is the guy. Ed Lamb does rock. He's awesome. But he's a real quiet, unassuming, you know, kind of an engineer guy. And he does his stuff. But he makes awesome stuff. Right. And that all happened because we were there doing positive reinforcement, encouraging good behaviors, accepting people when they came in, not pushing people away because we weren't familiar with them or didn't know them. Right. And when you are trying to build tribe, stop worrying about things like, well, who did you vote for? Who fucking cares? I don't care who my butcher voted for. I don't care who my plumber voted for, right? I care that, can we connect? Do we get along? Do we offer a mutual benefit to each other? And can I give positive reinforcement to this relationship so that my network is there when I need it, right? I don't care who the people that repair my truck voted for. I care that when I need my truck repaired, Somebody will be there and they will push me to the front of the line because I am consistently there for them and I give them a positive reinforcement when they take care of me, right? And I don't abuse it. I, I make it mutually beneficial to both parties, okay? Now, sometimes when you're doing all this stuff, you're going to end up dealing with conflict, okay? Now, here's one of the big problems in conflict. When you're dealing with conflict with a dog, you have to keep it very, very simple, if a dog does something they're not supposed to, don't do that anymore. And you give them a consequence. It's typically some form of a correction, right? And if they go, if they decide to escalate the conflict, then I have to escalate the correction. If they decide, okay, yep, I, I'm not going to pursue that conflict, then I can immediately praise them for not pursuing the conflict and we can move on. When you're dealing with people, it's a little bit different. All right. So when I'm dealing with conflict with a person, there's lots of ways this comes up. The whole political thing that I just mentioned is one very classic example. So let's say I'm getting my truck worked on, right? And my truck, you know, I just had the engine rebuilt. I just had a transmission rebuilt. I just dumped $20,000 into my truck over the last like three months, right? Now I'm glad my truck's all working great again and all that fun stuff. And, but I put a lot of money into my truck. If I'm there talking to these people about my truck and they happen to mention they, they've never done this, but let's just say they happen to mention that they're all for some political person that I think is a complete and total douchebag. I could make that a whole issue and break that relationship down, or I could ignore it because I don't care because I'm, I don't interact with them at that level. I interact with them at the level of I need my truck fixed and I can maintain that relationship and I could keep a great person in my network for what they do for me and what I do for them. And I don't create conflict where it's not needed. And this is one of the things I explain to people with their dogs. Don't create conflict with your dog that isn't necessary, right? Some people will deliberately push into, they don't necessarily realize they're doing this on purpose, but their, their dog does a, a little minor thing and they drive into that minor thing and they drive into that minor thing and they drive into that minor thing until their dog becomes so frustrated, they feel like they don't have any other option other than to lash out at the person. And then they lash out at the person, the person's like, whoa, what happened? Why did my dog bark at me or growl at me or whatever they did? And I'm like, because you created conflict where you didn't need it to be, right? You could have backed off a little bit on your correction and kept with your consistency of just, no, this is what you need to do. It's okay. You can do it, blah, 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 depending on where your dog's at and their training level and all this other kind of stuff, right? A lot of people start with their dogs already older and an older dog becomes frustrated a little faster. And when they do become frustrated, if they do want to lash out, it's a bigger deal than if a puppy lashes out. And so this happens a lot of times when you're dealing with people is people are set in their ways, right? We all have our opinions and we think our opinions are right because if we didn't think our opinions were right, we would have different opinions. And so because we think our opinions are right, when somebody has an opinion that's different than ours, 
a lot of times we feel like we have to prove our opinion is right. No, you don't. Stop trying to convince everybody you interact with that every aspect of your opinion needs to be adopted by them. Right now, if I have somebody who I'm really close to or that potentially wants to be in a inner circle, close friends relationship with me, if they have a really weird belief or a belief that's kind of one of those like this is a boundary for me in a close relationship, then they just never become a close personal friend. They never get into that inner circle of people. Right. They can still come train with me if they're a client. They can still be my butcher or my plumber or my mechanic they're never going to be a close friend. If I do d- discover, hey, this person and me agree on, wow, a lot of crap, that they're going to slowly, incrementally become a closer and closer friend to me. And I get to take that one small step at a time. But I do not need to create conflict where it is not necessary. Right. And I want to move these people into that closer and closer circle slowly. I don't want to be the person who runs around frantically at an event trying to develop my tribe in a weekend. Right. And all of a sudden I've got all these people because the other crazy people there will be like, oh, I'm looking for my tribe, too. Yeah, we should totally connect together. Then you have this group of like eight to 10 or 20 people that are all the crazies all getting together, know nothing about each other. And start like sharing their most intimate crap. And then they suddenly find out, holy crap, you have some opinion that's so different from my opinion that I can't be close to you. And then this whole thing explodes in drama and craziness, right? Stop trying to do that. Your natural friendships will form naturally. Your intermediate friendships and connections will form naturally. And your peripheral relationships will perform, will happen naturally. And it's about networking more than it is about this close knit. Oh, we're going to all join together when the zombies come type of situation. So be very careful that you don't just naturally create conflict where there's no need for conflict. Right. I've had people I've had trans people come and train with me. I've had uh, gay and lesbian people come and train with me. And if we want to have they want to engage in a conversation with me about my opinions on those things. I will happily talk to them. I will be friendly. I will engage. But I do not introduce those conversations when we're training dogs. They're paying me to help them train their dogs. I don't care about their lifestyles or or where they go to church or what their religion is or anything else when we're training dogs. Right. If I'm friendly and nice, maybe those conversations will come up. And then maybe they'll listen to my side of the opinion version and I can listen to their side of the opinion version and I can go, hmm, you made a couple points there I've never heard before. And they can go, maybe you've made a couple points I've never heard before. We can both appreciate each other's perspectives and we can both develop a closer connection, even if we still disagree on things because we handled conflict properly. We didn't just escalate it to the most important thing in the whole world right now. And so many people, the, the media and everything else, social media does this terribly, is they encourage that type of behavior. They encourage the behavior to escalate everything to the most important topic in the entire world right now. And you have to fight over it. And the only thing that does is break down your network, break down your connections, break down your relationships. You do not have to agree with everyone And they do not have to agree with you for you to have good interactions with each other, benefit from your relationships together, be mutually beneficial and have trust and respect in each other. Stop thinking that everyone has to agree with every idea you have. Here's a wake up call. We just talked about opinions and we all I have plenty of opinions. I'm a very opinionated person. And I think my opinions are all right. They are all correct or they wouldn't be my opinions. But some of my opinions are definitely wrong. I just don't know which ones they are. And you have opinions. And some of your opinions are definitely wrong. But you don't know which one of your opinions are wrong either. 
Do you want to know? I want to know. I want to know which of my opinions are wrong. This is why I listen to guys like Jordan Peterson and all the interviews that he does with people and things like that. I want to challenge the assumptions and the opinions that I have. And I want to go, no, I'm still pretty confident in that opinion. And then I want to go, hmm, that particular statement really challenged one of my opinions. I need to think about that some more. I want to know where I'm wrong. Do you want to know where you're wrong? Most people don't want to know where they're wrong. Most people just want to go, nope, I have my opinions. I'm right. Everybody else is wrong. Blah, blah, blah. Well, you're an idiot if you think that way. And if you think that way and I just offended you too fucking bad, you're an idiot. You should want to know where your opinions are wrong. And then you should want to discuss those opinions with people who have different opinions than you. Not all the time. Some things aren't that important to waste time on, right? But the things that are important to you, if you come across somebody who has a different opinion, be like, well, why do you think that way? Well, what do you think about this? Ask more questions than you answer. Stop trying to defend your opinion all the time and start going, well, what about this idea? How do you like argue against that? What about that? What's your response to this kind of question? What's your response to that kind of question? How would you deal with this kind of objection to your opinion? And just let them explain their situation to you. You may change your opinion. You may walk away going, nope, I am more locked into my opinion than I ever was before, but I'm glad I heard their, their viewpoints on it, right? And you can still be friends with that person. You can still have a relationship. You can still include them in your network, even if you're like, no, nah, they're not getting too close, but I'm still going to buy meat from them because they're a really good farmer and they have really good beef and I like buying meat from them, right? Stop elevating every potential situation to the maximum potential conflict and then arguing over it like it's the hill to die on. They are not all hills to die on. There are a few hills to die on. Most of the things we argue about are not that. And stop being defensive about it. When we're defensive, all we do is create conflict when it doesn't need to be there. Listen to other people's opinions. Hear what they have to say. Think about them before you actually respond, which usually means not responding at all during the initial conversation. Just going, very interesting. I've never thought about it that way before. Hmm, I'm going to have to give that some thought, right? And you just listen. You think about it. You digest it over a week or two. And then the next time you see them, maybe you have some different questions to ask, right? But don't elevate everything to being the hill to die on. Consistency and routine is one of the last sections. So, okay. So with dog training, consistency, I can tell the number one thing I can tell about your training with your dog is how consistent you are based on how consistently your dog obeys your commands. The same thing applies when building your tribe, your network. If you only interact with somebody every year and somebody else interacts with that person every month, the person who interacts every month is going to be much higher on the I will serve this person first than the person who I only see once a year. Now, there are a lot of areas where you're maybe only ever going to see that person once a year. There are other areas where maybe I see this person every week. Some people I might see every day, right? But I need to wait the value, the time, the energy I'm going to give to each of the people in my network for these mutually beneficial relationships by how high on their list do I want to be, right? And then I'm going to give them that much energy and effort back from me so that I stay at that level. And then I'm going to kind of read and, and like, hmm, is this, does this person actually want me to be? this close, right? Maybe they only want to see you once a year or once a month. Maybe they don't want to see you every day or every week. And I'm going to, I'm going to respect their boundaries. I'm going to go, okay, I'm not going to force myself in there. If they are interested in bringing me in closer, that's great. If they're not, well, at least I'm at this level with them and I know where I am and I'm going to respect that. And I'm going to benefit as much as I can from that position. And I'm going to give them as much benefit back as I feel like I'm receiving, maybe a little bit more, right? Because if I give them a little bit more, maybe they will bring me a little bit in closer if I feel like that's something that I want to do. So invest into the people in your tribe. If you're getting something from someone, 
give something back to that person. You can do this by supporting their business, right? If you're buying meat from them, buy meat from them. If they're a mechanic, bring your vehicle in whenever you need work to them, right? Give them a little tip, a little bonus when they take care of you, right? You can be a loyal customer. You can do it for the people that you want to have closer to you by having events at your house, a barbecue, a party, a whatever, and invite them. Maybe they come, maybe they don't. Invite them two or three times. After like a third invitation, especially if you gave them like, don't do it this way. Hey, it's Wednesday. This weekend we're having an event. Would you like to come? I will always say no, even if I wanted to go. Even if I don't have anything going on that weekend, if you tell me on Wednesday, I will say no out of principle because you don't respect my time, right? So give people two, three weeks notice, a month or more notice if you can, right? And then offer a couple of times. If they come, great. If they don't, okay. But consistent, and then once people start to like work their way into your closer network, consistently give them that time back. Be reliable to them. If, so, if somebody that you know, you guys always hear me say, I don't answer phone calls from numbers I don't recognize. If you're a person who I will take a phone call from, you don't show up as a number, you show up as a name. And when that phone call rings, unless I can't take your call, like maybe I'm in the middle of a live stream, then I'm taking that call and I'm going to talk to that person, right? If Jack Spierko calls me, I answer. If John Willis or Nicole Sauce calls me, I answer, right? There are certain people I answer the phone for if I can, and other people that I go, don't know who that is, they can leave a message, right? But I'm willing to invest back in them if they reach out to me, whether they're just giving me information or whether they need me to do something for them, I answer those calls. If I get an email saying, hey, Nicole needs this or Jack needs that, I stop what I'm doing or I set time aside on my calendar and I make sure there is time to do that thing that they need, right? Because they've given me more than I've given them and I'm willing to invest back and I want to do it consistently and with a routine anytime they ask. They always know they can reach out to me and I will stop what I'm doing and help them if, it, if it's at all possible for me, right? Now, not everybody gets that, but be respectful of where you are in that environment, but also be willing to give back to the people who are willing to invest in you. And then patience and persistence, okay? Here's the deal. This is not an overnight thing. You don't go to an event on a weekend and build your tribe. In fact, most people who think they need a tribe already have a tribe. They just don't recognize it for what it is. Now, maybe it's not everything you want it to be. Maybe your network has some big holes in it that you want filled. But if you've been doing anything right, you probably have a guy or a girl you could call for three or four or five different areas of your life. Maybe it's a mechanic. Maybe it's a butcher. Maybe it's a local farmer. Maybe it's the massage therapist that you always use. Whatever it is, that's the beginning of your tribe. Then if you see a hole, holy crap, what am I going to do if, what am I going to do if my vehicle breaks down? What am I going to do if they, you will eat the bugs and be happy people succeed in getting beef out of the stores and beef is a big part of my life. Well, I have people who raise cows, right? Whatever the, what am I going to do? If thing is you start building those relationships now, start slow, be patient, persist over time. These things don't happen overnight. And then this little fly is really bugging me. And then what you will realize in six months, in a year, in two years is holy crap. I have somebody for this and I have somebody for that. And this other guy that I met is a guy I can say, hey, do you know anybody who does this thing that I need? And he says, yeah. And when you reach out to that person, you don't just go, oh, hi, I need this thing. You go, hey. Bob sent me to you. And he goes, I love Bob. 
and you go, I love Bob too. And now you've got an instant connection with this person through your mutual friendship with Bob or whoever your Bob is. And you go, now we have a closer connection than we would have had. And every time I need this thing, I'm coming to you. And I will sometimes spend money or time or energy that I don't need to spend just to build a closer connection to that person because I want them to know I appreciate what they're doing for me and I want them to be there for me in the future. And so as you develop your tribe, work on building your foundation of trust and respect, having clear communication, and when they say something that seems slightly offensive to you, ask them, what did you mean by that? This is what I heard. Is that what you were trying to say? Don't automatically jump to being offended by something that somebody might say. Give positive reinforcement. When they are doing something that is something that benefits you, make sure you benefit them back. Don't create conflict when it doesn't need to be there. And when there is conflict, Handle it in a mature and responsible way. Build consistency and routine and understand this does not happen overnight. Have patience and persistence in building a network and you will have a network that when you need something and you're trying to build this resilient lifestyle and you reach out and you say, I need this thing, there will be a person there that can help you with that thing. Or you can reach out to your Bob, whoever that is, and say, do you have a person who knows this or I can get this thing from? And he will be like, reach out to this person. And when you do it, that connection of a connection of a connection is still all part of your network and all part of your tribe. And sometimes you won't even know it's there until you need it. So I hope that's been helpful for you. All right, let's check some of our comments and see what we got. Pippinized is here as always. Good to see you. Cheers to you as well. And uh, we also have Volkant. Is that Volkanud? I don't know how to pronounce that exactly correctly, but I'm glad you're here. It says finally caught alive. Yes, I, I experience that all the time, like Jack and some of these other people. No, I think you're probably right. It's Vulcanot. Vulcanot? I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, but like I often will watch like uh, John Willis's lives or Jack Spearco's lives or sometimes Nicole Sauce's lives, but I, I rarely get to see them live because they're like live in the middle of the day or something like that. So when I do get to catch them actually live and actually like send comments and texts and things like that, I always appreciate it. Okay, so it's Volknut. Volknut. Oh, that makes much more sense. I appreciate you sending that. So Volk Newt Farms, and uh, good to see you here. I really appreciate you being here tonight. Okay, over on Instagram, you guys are pretty active on the chat, so I'm going to be scrolling through. Yes, the puppy was sleepy. Uh, puppy porn is the best. I love showing her little puppies off. My wife was like, hey, should I get you a prop? I'm like, I'm not sure what we could get. She's like, what about a puppy? I'm like, oh, perfect. Um, thank you, Tracy, for when is Father's Day? I don't even know when Father's Day is. I don't do holidays very much, so I know some people will be upset about that. Um, Pat over at Canine Philosophy, fantastic instructor reminder, revisiting the beginner experience. Yes, I really appreciated Chip's perspective on that today. On you know, hey, sometimes like he he's like, I've gone to numerous electronics courses, but I'll go to a basic electronics course just because I might learn one thing new. And uh, there's so much that you can learn from doing things like that. So, um, you know, going back and addressing the basics over and over again can often be really good when you've been in a specific industry for a long time. You, you lose touch with what it was like when you were first getting into that industry. So that's really good. Um, so uh, talking about the raised beds, that was fun. Um, Tracy said, love Bob. Bob is awesome. Everybody loves Bob. And um, Daniel over at Nitro Express K9, that's one of our pups that we sold him. He said Bob's the best too. Bob is pretty awesome. Uh, Daniel says, gas masks don't work without a full suit anyway. Yeah, a lot of the people doing the gas mask thing are like into weird things. Like if you were in, it depends on the situation, right? Some things that a gas mask will filter out are absorbable through the skin. So if you don't have a full suit, 
like we call it in the military, we called it mop gear. Um, if you don't have a full suit that has like activated charcoal in it and all that kind of stuff, then it doesn't really matter if it can be absorbed by the skin. And some things aren't absorbed by the skin. So if you're in a house fire, then maybe a gas mask can be good. And um, but there's various different gas masks that will help filter out debris from a uh, house fire that maybe they won't do anything against other different um, toxins. Right. And then there was that whole like train derailment. And I think it was Ohio and all those top toxic chemicals that were spilt there. And maybe a gas mask would have helped. Maybe it wouldn't. Sometimes just being aware of what's going on in your immediate surroundings. And if you have trains that transport toxic chemicals, maybe you should know that. And then maybe it makes sense to get a gas mask in that situation. Maybe it just makes sense to like be aware of what's going on in your environment and maybe leaving should you need to and being ready to leave quickly for a week or two. Right. And having a place to go, uh, you know, talking to a friend or a relative or something like that. So. It's not that there's not some places for this. Like I mentioned uh, night vision earlier, right? And all the night vision stuff. I have night vision because I think it's cool. And I have the money to buy night vision. And I use it in my business to film at night for night training exercises. And if you go onto our social media, you'll see training at night with the PVS 14s and the thermals and stuff like that. Do I think I'm going to have to clear buildings at night using my PVS 14s? Excusez-moi. No. So... If I don't have my three months of finances in the bank account to be able to take care of bills for three months, I'm not going to go buy a $4,000 PVS 14, right? That's like after all the other stuff is done, be ready to lose a job, be ready to deal with a family member getting a terminal illness. Once those two things are taken care of, like 75% of anything else that can happen, hurricanes, all this other kind of stuff is probably already taken care of, right? Get a little food storage, some water things like that, have some backup power, especially if you live in a cold or a really hot place. Like Florida's hot, like up north when I was in Fairbanks, it was cold. If we have electricity go out, we better have a way to heat, right? So either I need to have a wood burning stove, a fireplace or a generator to be able to like make my house work where it produces heat, where I'm in big trouble. So, you know, normal, regular things to be able to deal with life. And once most of those things are done, the vast majority of things that could potentially go wrong are already going to be taken care of. And if the zombies do attack, well, there's only a few other things that I need to do for zombies. And really, the zombies aren't going to attack. So it's not that big a deal. Although, Walking Dead is a pretty cool show. All right. Uh, hurricane and liquor, food, etc. Exactly. Always have a good supply of liquor on hand for when the hurricanes come. And uh, Tracy said, Mountain House chicken and dumplings is better than Cracker Barrel. So Mountain House is cool, freeze-dried. So Mountain House, for those that don't know, is like freeze-dried meals. It's often uh, marketed to like backpacking and stuff like that. Freeze-dried stuff is cool. It lasts a long time. Uh, we have a freeze-dryer. I actually have two freeze-dryers. I like freeze-dryers. And uh, But here's the deal at the end of the day with a freeze-dryer is what are you using it for? Are you, are you like really think you're going to need to store food for 20 years? Or are you using it to do other things with? Are you using it to consolidate liquids? Are you using it when you travel on the road? Are you using it when you go backpacking? What are you doing? And are you at the level where a freeze dryer makes sense? Are you at the level where that sort of stuff makes sense? Or should you focus on other things? But I do agree, Tracy, Mountain House food uh, meals, Mountain House freeze dried meals are really, really good. Here's the key if you're getting the foil packs. Have a long spoon, the long camping spoons that are that will reach all the way to the bottom of the, the package and stir it up really well. Otherwise, you'll be eating your delicious meal and then you'll get that one little mouthful of still dried out crazy. And it actually tastes pretty good if you were expecting it. But when you're not expecting it, it can be a little crazy. All right. Um, Daniel said... Always have the bourbon preps. That is right, man. You always got to have some bourbon on hand. When I go get bourbon, I'm like, hey, might as well get two or three bottles of each one because, you know, when I'm down to one, I'll just come buy two or three more bottles. It's not like over the next couple months, it's not going to be drank. Uh, boundaries are very underestimated. So is saying no. Yeah. When you're in a business or you're building relationships with people, one of the most important things you can say is no. One of the first times I met John Willis, um, he has this whole like, um, area built up 
like they build tactical nylon equipment, right? Chest rigs and all this other kind of cool stuff, slings, all sorts of things. And I was like, hey, man, would you be interested in making my dog leads? And he was like, no. Like, didn't ask any questions, didn't do anything else. He's like, I, I already know I've got all this stuff going on. No. And I went, okay, cool. And we moved on with the conversation, right? He's probably going to be building some stuff that we're doing with some other um, agreements we're working with with other companies, a, a canine first aid kit and some stuff like that. And he's probably going to be the one building the packages for that. But it's because I respected his no. And then we looked at well, what other things could we do to work together that would benefit both him and us, right? So don't be afraid to say no. No will usually not break down a relationship. A lot of the ways I put it is, let me think about it. And if they push, I go, okay, if you need an answer right now, I do understand. The answer is no. If you let me think about it, the answer might still be no, but I'll at least consider it. And having that type of response often makes you more desirable to the person, whatever it is that's going on, than if you try and say yes right off the bat, right? Because if you say yes without thinking about it, you often end up in a situation where you can't deliver and then you end up damaging a relationship that could have been very profitable because you jumped the gun when you shouldn't have. It's always better to say no than to say yes and not deliver. And uh, so going through, I'm ignoring some of your inappropriate comments between you and Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I did not get to tell my wife that story yet. So she heard that story first right here while I was talking live. Um, also, when you do mess up, here's the deal. We all mess up in our communication with people. Don't be so prideful that you go, oh, I didn't mess up. Be like, hey, I screwed that one up. Sorry about it. And move on with your life, right? Be genuine in your apology. Try not to do it again. And then move on. Don't try and uh, just stick with it no matter what. A lot of people's pride gets in the way of building their tribe and their network. So good to see you, Ryan, with Ontario Canine. Um, let's see here. I volunteer Valak for the chew test. Yeah, that might be a uh, a good one. Is uh, we need we need to, I have a couple of chewy dogs. I need to get them in. Uh, Daniel said, "Will there be different mounts for different ear pro ops core versus Peltor? Always gets in the way when I'm mounting ear pro on human helmets." So we've been talking, and uh, I need to look at is is ops core a three M? That's what I need to look into. So I know there's ops core. Peltor is three M. I think most of the Peltor hearing protection has the same basic uh, design in, in the, the way the molds go together. So I need to get in and get an ops core and a, a couple of ops core and a couple of Peltors. I've looked at the uh, walkers and they definitely have a different mounting type platform and a different shape uh, to them than the 3M uh, Peltor models. So that's part of what we're going through now is we've got the base figured out. Uh, for both the older and the newer uh, models of their helmets. And now it's just a matter of, do we need to adjust the top portions to accommodate the different types? So uh, that's kind of our next step in figuring all that kind of stuff out. And uh, I've got to put a little bit of money into getting some of those sets. Of course, you know, it's not because I think they're cool and I want to play around with them myself. It's, it's all for research and development. But um, my wife's like, yeah, uh -huh, sure. As a, you're always buying crazy stuff and testing it out. But um, yeah, that's definitely something we have to check into there, Daniel. That's uh, kind of my next step in the whole process. And uh, Tracy said, God put those in your life who belong there or moves the ones who don't belong. Yeah, don't try and force relationships. That's just, it's a good thing. If a relationship happens, it happens. If you're running around trying to force it, even if it could have happened, you're probably going to mess it up. And by trying to force things, you end up messing it up. Uh, Robert Masters is here. He said, I'm introducing Luma to rope walking. Uh, is that jute rope you use uh, like maybe one inch diameter or something? We actually use, it's an anchor rope. I believe it's made out of nylon, but I'm not 100% sure. We got it on a spool. It's a big spool of it. Uh, it is one inch. One inch is a good um, diameter to have. Uh, I did try to use jute in a, like a one and a quarter or one and a half inch size. 
uh, it worked great for a short period of time. And then the, the elements just broke it down and they started breaking. So if you got jute that was uh, like oil coated, that might work, but I don't know if you want the dogs walking across oil coated um, stuff, but they make like an oil coated jute for certain different things. And it, it kind of protects it from the elements. Um, so that's something you could check into. Uh, also one quick thing, Robert, I'm not sure you may have been hacked on Facebook. Uh, so you may want to change your username. I've been getting some messages that I don't think are from you. Um, they're trying to get me into like doing some investing stuff and things like that. So you might want to check into that over on the Facebook side. Um, if it is you, that's fine, but just wanted you to know. And then Daniel said, Opscore has the amps mount. Uh, most other ear pro can mount to the 3M Peltor. So yeah, that's definitely something I have to check out. I'm, I've not delved deep into it. Um, I really, I know Opscore makes the stuff that the actual tier one guys use and they're like um, $1,200 for a set of earmuffs, which is a little excessive. I don't know. I'm, I might get a pair, but um, I definitely need to check that out and see how all that works. And, um, but on the dogs, what we're kind of focused on is if it gets to the point where we have the tier one units and stuff wanting to get these, that's awesome. But we're kind of focusing on the law enforcement side of things because they're kind of getting into this now. And most of them are using like Peltor 3M level type stuff. So, but, um, but yeah, we're definitely gonna be doing more uh, research and development on that. So that's pretty cool. Um, okay. So Volknut Farms over on YouTube said, do you have any trainer hookups in the area of Wyoming? Um, the closest person to you that I know of, uh, and I don't know that they're still fully functional. I haven't um, like talked to them in a little while, but they it's called Third Eye Canine. So there's two places. The Third Eye Canine, they're actually in Montana. And uh, um, Mike Martinez is the primary guy over there. I trained with him when I was learning early on. Me and him were kind of like students side by side. Uh, he was a little more advanced than I was, but he's a pretty awesome guy, pretty hardcore um, he does some really awesome training, uh, in the Montana area. And then I cannot think of the name. There's a guy that trained under him that is in the, uh, he's like South of Denver, Colorado area. And, um, I will try to see, I'm drawing a total blank on that guy. He was, I, a guy that I know met him at an event and he would kind of douche baggy on us. So I was like, eh, don't know that I want to promote this guy anymore. So maybe I won't spend any time trying to look him up. But um, if you find Mike at Third Eye, uh, he may direct you down there if that's closer to you. And he's probably still a great trainer. He was just like, he was a douchebag. He was he was one of those guys that's like, I'm better than everybody else and I'm going to prove it. And I'm like, all right, dude, you're a fucking douchebag and I don't want to deal with you. So you can decide whether you want to uh, try and work with him or not. One thing that a lot of our clients will do uh, it depends on what you want to do. So send me a text at 813-836-9244. Um, depending on what you want to do, um, a lot of our clients, we actually have a, a guy who just arrived this evening as we were getting started. Um, they will come for anywhere between three to 10 days and train with us. And they'll do that maybe every two to three months for you know two to three rotations and sessions. And then all of a sudden, um, when they get to the point where they're like, yes, I'm happy with my dog, then you don't have to come and train with us anymore. But um, it's totally worth uh, coming down and doing a little bit of that kind of stuff. The clients that do it tend to come back numerous times because they really uh, like and benefit from the training. Um, so he said, Valknu is the knot of the slain associated with Odin. My last name is Nutsten, a play on words. So that's awesome. Yeah, I really like that. I had a business called Dunitas Canine, which did basically the same thing we're doing with Fortress Canine. And uh, I ended up changing the name to Fortress K9 because as cool as I thought Dunatos was, it just didn't make sense to anybody. So, um, but as long as things are working out, awesome. I love it. Valknut Farms. So you guys should check that out over on YouTube and uh, and see what he has going on over there. It's pretty cool. Hey, look, I have a dog in the background who's standing up. Hey, Blitz. I saw his little ears on my little thing. And I'm like, bonehead. All right, guys. So with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up for this evening. Uh, real quick, Daniel said, let me know if you need any help with the ear pro mounting. I've done a lot of adaptation with different helmets in ear pro. Yeah, that would be awesome. If you have any of the um, the ops course stuff uh, and you don't mind bringing it out on Saturday. So Daniel trains with us on Saturdays during our classes. Uh, I would love to just put it up on the platforms that we have and see how it fits and mounts. 
And if it's off, then at least I know, okay, I definitely need to get a set of these and, uh, and send them to Ed Lamb and let him design the, uh, the base to, to fit those as well. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget, if you'd like to, uh, if you like this content and the work that we do, give us thumbs up, subscribe to us, share this with your friends and family, uh, tell them about us. Follow us on Noster, and if you're listening to this as a podcast, listen on Fountain.fm. Both of those allow you to do value for value, and you can send us boosts or zaps, and that's little bits of Satoshi, and we always appreciate it. We often will zap back and boost back and uh, let other people know about you as well. Don't forget to check out and share our websites for dog training and to purchase dogs. Our dog training website is k9academy.us. And to purchase a dog or a puppy, you can check out Fortress K9. And on FortressK9.com, uh, you can put a forward slash puppies in there if you want to check out our information on getting our puppies. Don't forget, you can reach out and send me messages telling us what you like, what you don't like, uh, topics you would like covered. Dang it, there was a guy I was going to respond to today, and I was a little rushed before we got started. So, Daniel, I am sorry if you're listening to this. I will get you on next week's podcast. I'm going to put it in as soon as we wrap this up so that I don't forget. But you can email me at joel, J-O-E-L, at FortressK9.com, or you can send me a text at 813-836-9244, and you can also DM me on TikTok or Instagram, uh, Facebook, I'm not quite as good on. You can use Facebook Messenger. Eh, I try and work with that one. Uh, YouTube comments, I try and keep up with as well, but I'm not quite as good at. So uh, if you're going to DM, uh, TikTok or Instagram seem to be the two best on that. And then uh, don't forget to check us out on all the platforms. As I just mentioned, we're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Truth Social, Gab, MeWe, Freesetting, and Noster. And then I just recently got onto LinkedIn. On everything about Facebook, we are at Fortress K9. On uh, Instagram, we are also at Fortress K9. Puppies and at K9 Academy. Us. And on Facebook, we are Fortress K9 Kennels. We are Fortress K9 Puppies and we are Fortress K9 Academy. So I got hacked about a year ago or so and had to rebuild those pages and it kind of got messed up. Sorry about that. Don't forget to do all the things like share, all that good stuff. Don't forget to check out our two. Uh, franchises in the Texas, Houston, Texas area at K9 Philosophy on both Instagram and TikTok is Pat over there. If you are in that area and you would like help training your dog, check him out. Again, that's at K9 Philosophy. And if you are looking for a puppy and you're in the Tennessee area, check out at Mountain Vista K9. They are building a small breeding program from our lines. And uh, I'm excited to see their first couple of litters coming to be. Next week's topic is going to be the resilient mind, how dog training principles can teach us about life. So we're going to be building on more on the building a resilient lifestyle by building a resilient mindset. Don't forget those puppies are available. If you're interested, contact me. There are on a first come first serve. We have a couple of reservation slots still left. And until next time, remember to train hard and stay safe. Fortress Canine Podcast.